B1 family, what's up? So we got about 30 minutes of B1 action. And man, we got some people bringing some serious heat in this one. I'm going to try to gauge by the analytics how long you like for these to be. 30 minutes, an hour, two hours. And y'all can let me know in the comments. Like, hey, you know, good 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour is what I need. Or if you need longer because, you, you know, you do listen on the night shift. I'll try to compromise in between the two and get you all, guys all the B1 footage all of the B1 family that's really on code, whether they're not FBA or not, because I know some of y'all try to make these, you know, um, comments. Now, real quick, if you know somebody's uh, been off code and they've been cooning and they've been talking smack about FBA, tag me on IG, TikTok, My Black Universe, so I can see it and make sure they're in our mix again, because we don't want anybody false flagging and acting like they're on code with us. At, uh, at convenient time and then turn around once they you know we kind of propped them up or we showed them some love they turn around they spit in our faces we're not gonna do that so let me know i feel like nobody's paying attention to the fact that there's currently a war on traditional family values in america and a war on men the left liberal women are like let's snuff men out let's feminize men let's tell men they're not men we can be men and we don't need you and traditional family values, oh, here's a war against that. What is a family? A family can be whatever you want it to be. We Again, it's back to, we don't need men. That's why when you look at the culture on the left, you have more violence, you have more crime, you don't have men in the homes. Like every, you have lower rates of marriage. Those values are not important to them and they are literally purposely seeping them and infusing them into America, into the American value system. All you got to do is turn the TV on and you can see it. Trust me, it's a war on men and a war on family. By the way, this isn't a new war. This war started in the 70s. It's just that now we can see all the work that's been done. And unless we do something now, everything we know as far as family will be no more. I was doing some research, and I'm going to tell y'all just right now, don't you vote for Kamala Harris. If you vote for Kamala Harris, this really go to the black women of America right now. You feel what I'm saying? I don't think y'all understand what's going on. If y'all vote for Kamala Harris, that nigga ain't never getting out of jail. And pray to God he don't go, because she finna lay these laws down on niggas. You feel me? You got to go look up who this woman really is, fam. She got a long, long history of putting niggas away around this bitch. I'm talking about really hiding evidence on people she know damn well is innocent. Hiding the evidence so the nigga don't get out of jail. Do not vote for this bitch. Oh, y'all better open up y'all lives. She thought she was just finna win the black vote by getting Meg Thee Stallion to dance with her and shit. Meg Thee Stallion sent niggas to jail too. I'm just telling y'all do y'all research. She ain't for us. They asked her the other week. They say, Kamala, who is your favorite rapper that's alive? Guess who she said? Guess who Kamala said? He said Tupac, fam. Do not vote for Kamala Harris. You know, there's a reason why I always tell people to do their own research and to always dig deeper into things. And here's an example. Kamala Harris just announced her new economic policy. And one aspect of that policy, the one that I know because I haven't reviewed it all yet, is she's talking about a ban on price gouging to deal with inflation which flies in the face of basic economics and i see so many people supporting this without really having a true understanding of this let me tell you this without getting too deep inflation is based on supply and demand like that's basically what it is it's based on supply and demand and when you tell someone that they are no longer able to price if you restrict someone and say you can't charge more than this without addressing the supply and demand issue which actually leads to higher costs you're going to send so many uh companies out of business you're going to destroy the economy you're going to actually lead to higher prices you're actually going to lead to even more inflation so people don't really seem to understand this concept so i mean honestly for me it's crazy to, to think that a presidential candidate would propose something like this. I know Elizabeth Warren had some type of a, a, a bill on that, I think last year, uh, that's just been sitting there. And I cannot believe that this is something that a presidential cam candidate is seriously proposing. Bro, 
the people who have wrecked this economy are trying to sell you on they're going to fix the economy. That's just so crazy to me that people are actually falling for this shit. But hey, this is America. <laughs> Peace. Y'all clowns for Kamala. That's what y'all are. And, and I'm sorry because these are my educated sisters. Y'all got to read. Y'all got to read. Research. She's sitting there saying, I won't do anything for black people. But yet all these laws she's passing right now as we speak just for immigrants. 16000 25000 for a house? This much a month? I ain't got no house. Like, yo, y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. And, and they ain't even had to work for that shit. Get no credit score up or nothing? Yo, yo, Kamala, you fucking up. You not for us at all. And you sisters out there that saying y'all for her? Y'all not reading. Y'all don't, what is y'all common sense at? And, and, and the crazy thing is y'all been to college. Did y'all leave reading in college? Did y'all stop reading after college? Like, yo, this, this it's, 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 it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but y'all not living by a refuge city. So go over there to these refuge city and see and see how hard it is. See how hard it is. Right, right, ta a town next over. They out there, they out there robbing and shooting and killing shit. Come on, man. Let's let, let's wake up, sister. Stop being stop being a happy to be a clown. When a clown ever been good? I'm watching Kamala Harris' uh, election campaign thing, and I just feel like let me just say this to everybody out there who 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 uh. Voting for Kamala Harris. I think y'all stupid as the motherfucker. Stupid as a motherfucker. She talk about the one thing they go off on is the reproductive rights. Who's in office right now? If Donald Trump changed it when he was in office, it been three years. You ain't changed it yet, but you running off of that? You ran off of it last time. You ran off of uh, giving jobs last time. Who got these jobs? You, you count DoorDash and, 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 and this extra shit? Who got these jobs that y'all talk about everybody been getting? Because my mom, my sister, my brother, all of them moved out their house. All of them have moved out their house to move in apartments. Because it's cheaper. So... Under this administration that y'all claim y'all love and she's so good for the country, why haven't they done what they plan on doing three years ago? Why they ain't do it yet? Yet! They have yet to do anything! They still coming up with these same talking points and you stupid motherfuckers are still buying into the same dumb shit they said last time! You stupid! I'm watching Kamala Harris. Uh... Politics is not something that I talk about on my channel when y'all know that. But today I have to say this, especially after hearing Kamala Harris say as a president, you can always trust me. Hell no. No, 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 no. California trusted Kamala Harris and what happened? She fought tooth and nail to uphold wrongful convictions that had been secured through official misconduct that included evidence tampering, false testimony, and the suppression of crucial information by the prosecutors. When she was in those offices in California, that was the time for her to show that she was going to do right by Americans. She didn't choose to do right by Americans in California. And then she had the nerve to speak about how Donald Trump is only after self and always been after self. When in fact, she cared about her career so much, she didn't want to overturn them convictions due to the fact that she wanted to keep that conviction rating. Due to the fact that she wanted to continuously build her name. Even after it was shown that there was proof that the evidence that convicted people was tampered with by that lab technician or whatnot. Instead of choosing to do the right thing, she fought against doing the right thing. We say that we want a change in our country. How do we feel like somebody gonna give us that change that's willing to fight against what's right? She ain't fighting for what's right. She fighting for what's wrong. Whatever she feel like is in the best interest of her career and growing her name, that's what she gonna do. She ain't worried about us at home and she ain't worried about keeping her word to nobody. She just worried about saying what she gotta say to get that ass in office. I ain't voting for her because she got black skin. Fuck that. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Who wouldn't want to see a black woman president? Absolutely. Who wouldn't want to see history made? Absolutely. But absolutely not. Kamala Harris is not the right one. I don't care how many pots of green she put in a bathtub. 
I don't care what heritage she comes out and says that she has. I don't care how many plates she says she gonna put over here and put over there. She already took an oath in California to do right by Californians and she did wrong by them. Even after she took an oath. So what makes you think she'll take that oath to get into that presidential seat and keep her word to anybody? Now I know some people gonna try to come with some backlash, but here's the thing. I don't care. I have my own opinion. And if I don't trust somebody, I'm going to come out and say that I don't trust them. And I don't trust the damn word that's coming out of our mouth. It's deliberate. The Democratic Party realizes that the black vote is dwindling because the Democratic Party has not delivered for the black community. And they realize that. So what do they do? They open up these borders and they let people come from around the world come into this country. They're paying no rent. Their food is being provided for. They don't even make their beds. They have a maid to go and make their beds every day. We don't want them in our community. Let them go back to where they came from. Because it's my position that if you have a problem with your country, then you stay and you make it better by fighting that government. Making your government do what it needs to do by its people, because that's what we do in this country. That's what I've been doing all of my life. I don't have any place to run to. America is my home. It's my country. We built it. I couldn't agree more. Look at all the idiots making excuses for Kamala. She's only the vice president. She's in charge of the border, bro. She's the second most powerful person in the fucking country. Let's be serious. You see this comment right here? Many Americans are not aware, and I'm gonna to prove to you why Kamala Harris needs to take full responsibility for this inflation. Did you know the Inflation Reduction Act really came down to her? Inflation Reduction Act. So that is an act that was supposed to help combat inflation. The Senate was tied, and she was the tiebreaker vote. Has inflation been reduced? No. Let me give you another one that really impacted our economy and hopefully she'll take responsibility for that because it came down to her vote as well. Have you heard anything about the American Rescue Plan? Well, Kamala Harris was the deciding vote on that. We had a split Senate and again, her vote was the deciding factor. And here we are full of inflation. America is still suffering and she has not yet to come out and take full responsibility, but she wants us to believe that when she is president, it will change. She's been president because you can't tell me Joe Biden has been running things. Anywho, follow for more conservative content. And if you're already following, join in the comment section so we could talk about this a little more. This is what we do. Hate on our own people. You should be embarrassed. You not my people, okay? Let's let's make that quite clear. You are not my people. My people think freely. My people think with common sense. My people are not going to literally sit on this app and boost up the morale of someone who has been in the White House for the last three and a half years and has done absolutely nothing for my people. My people are the ones who actually give a fuck about the future of our country. My people don't vote based on identity and just because someone decides that they want to be on the black team when it's beneficial for them. My people judge people based on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. That identity politics that you people because like I said, y'all not my people. The identity politics that you people continue to uh, vote for, stand up for, soft shoe tap dance out here for, is the reason why our people are still at the bottom of the food chain. So how about you take yourself and your people back over to the side of the people who like to be mentally controlled, spiritually controlled, financially controlled, there's something I need to bring to your attention that happened last year that I don't think a lot of people know about. You see, apparently, Kamala Harris decided to uh, add other groups to the Freedman Bank. For those who are not aware, I'll break this down very quickly. She's gonna explain this a little bit as well. The Freedman Bank, it was created for freedmen, those who are free were freed from slavery. 
those who are Aras and like their descendants, obviously American descendants of slavery. That's what the Freedmen's Bank was created for. There's a reason why it's freed men and not black people bank, right? So apparently last year, she decided to collaborate with the US Department of Treasury and make changes to the Freedmen's Bank. Don't have to believe me, here's her speech here. And then I'm gonna show you the, the text to highlight some of the changes that have been made. And I think if you are freedmen, I think you're not gonna be happy about this if you didn't know about it. Here we go. So Freedmen's Savings Bank was founded by the United States Congress in 1865. It was a bank unlike any other our nation had known. Freedmen's Bank was established to serve Black Americans newly freed from slavery. So notice, once again, she tells you exactly what the bank was established for. So here is Kamala Harris openly admitting she knows who this bank was for. Let's go on. To help them build wealth and to build a better future. At Freedman's, to open a savings account, you just needed five cents, which it, I, as I've calculated, is about a dollar today. In the years after its founding, tens of thousands of black families opened an account at Freedman's. They saved up to buy a farm, to build a home, to open a business. Even school children saved their pocket money to deposit it in this institution. And then nine years later, after the bank first opened its doors, because of an economic downturn and because of the organized assault on the project of reconstruction, Freedman's Bank was forced to close. Over 60,000 people lost their savings. Now, Freedman's Bank was guided by a vision the vision of an economy that works for all Americans and includes all Americans. Let me pause. So you see what she's doing? Notice how includes all Americans. So this is something I do want to point out. A lot of times people bring up Black Wall Street, the burning of the burnings of Black Wall Streets. There are several different Black Wall Streets at that time. But a lot of times people bring that up as another example when freedmen lost their wealth in this country. But that's not the only example. This is another example here, the Freedmen's Bank, where all those people lost their wealth. So just keep that in mind. The vision of a nation in which all people have access to the financial resources they need to succeed, to thrive, and to determine their own future. Truly at the heart of that bank was the concept of self-determination. Over a century and a half later, in communities across our nation, that vision remains unrealized. Consider, today, black entrepreneurs are three times more likely to report that they did not apply for a loan for fear of being turned away by a bank. Pause. Do you see what she's starting to do? So now all of a sudden it went from freedmen to black entrepreneurs. So there's a difference between black and freedmen. So you see what she's doing? Wait for it. It gets crazier. Watch this. Often anecdotally because they heard about that experience from friends and relatives. Today, black and Latino homeowners are rejected by traditional financial institutions at a higher rate when applying for home loans. Now do you see what's happening here? Now she's added Latinos to the Freedman Bank situation. I'll say this again, the Freedman Bank was established for freed men, not black people, not Latinos, but see what she's doing? I told you guys, she snuck this one under the radar. Everybody see this? Okay, let's continue. And this is the case, even when they have credit profiles similar to other applicants. 
Today, many immigrant business owners, including some Asian American business owners, face language barriers that limit their ability to access capital and banking services. And people who live in rural areas, including many Native Americans, often lack access to traditional financial services of any kind. Now that is true. She is correct about that. However, once again, notice she's adding another group to Friedman Bank. And here's the thing. I agree that all of those groups, yes, they do have struggle. They do have struggles that are different from those that are part of the majority than the white majority. That is correct. I'm not here to tell you that they shouldn't receive some type of help. I believe they should receive some type of help. However, it should not be a part of the Freedmen's Bank. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you notice when there is something specifically for another group, we're not added to it. When they passed the anti-Asian hate crime bill, we weren't added to that bill. These are the things I want you guys to pay attention to. Again, this is not to get you to feel some type of way towards other groups. I love all people. But in particular, when it comes to freed men, notice how, going back with what to the video we showed before, when she said, well, no, I'm not going to sit up here and do something specifically for Black people. No. Remember she said that? So here we go again with the Freedman's Bank, something that was specifically for freed men. And here she is adding other groups to it. What does that tell you about Kamala Harris? Let's continue. So President Biden and I know that for our nation to succeed, these disparities must be spoken of, acknowledged, and addressed. One of the last action, actions, as you heard Secretary Yellen mentioned, I took as a United States Senator was to team up with leader Chuck Schumer and Senator Mark Warner and Senator Cory Booker and Chairman, Chairwoman, excuse me, Maxine Waters, to invest $12 billion in community lenders, which of course are financial institutions that predominantly do business in overlooked and underserved communities. Now, did you listen to what she just said there? Good point here, Casey. She's going to take this bank from Friedman. So insidious, Obamala. <laughs> you go, Kamala Obamala. <laughs> okay, I haven't heard that one. I heard Kamala, but Obamala is full of nothing but audacity and tricks. <laughs> That's a funny. <laughs> I like the <laughs> Okay, I haven't heard of that one. That that's a good one. All right, uh, but notice what she's doing now. Now she's bringing in underserved communities. I mean, that could be anybody, right? Now underserved communities are being added to Freedman's Bank. You see this? All right, let's continue. Last month, I was proud to announce that because of that hard work and the work of many of the leaders in this room, our administration has distributed more than eight billion dollars of that investment to 162 community lenders across our nation. That is $8 billion on the ground in communities across our nation right now. And I'll, and I'll share with you some of the examples. In North Dakota, Native American Bank lent $10 million to help fund an opioid addiction treatment facility on tribal lands. In Georgia, Carver Bank lent over half a million dollars to help Black-owned companies build affordable housing. And in Mississippi, Hope Credit Union, led of course by the great Bill Bynum, lent $10,000 to a Black-owned and woman-owned coffee company to help them expand. And that's just one example of the the incredible work that they do there. Since taking office, then I will tell you, I have traveled our nation and spoken with small business owners who have received funds from community lenders. And I have seen what it means in terms of, in terms of acknowledging, recognizing, and then feeding their ambition 
and aspiration and creativity. This is another one. Thank you, Be Easy, for saying that as well. Black owned doesn't mean freedmen. See, you guys, we got to pay attention to the vocabulary that's being used. Both in terms of their own aptitude and capacity, but also because they are in the best position to understand the needs and the capacity of their communities. And I've seen how they use that capital to hire people from the community, to open a, a new storefront on, on the main street, how they buy inventory from local businesses. The whole community benefits in one way or another, economically, not to mention psychically, from their presence. And at the same time, I have also seen how the great need for capital still remains in our country, meaning how much more work we still have yet to do. You know, I, I, I hope and know that, that everyone here does get the opportunity to travel our country. And from my travels, I will share with you, there are so many people in our country that have incredible dreams, fueled by their ambition, fueled by their aspiration, fueled by seeing what is possible and then going for it. But far too many still lack the resources and the support to make those dreams a reality. And what ends up happening then is these entrepreneurs cannot access capital to start a business. So do you see how now this is all about being an entrepreneur and starting a business, which by the way, everyone does not want to be an entrepreneur. <laughs> everyone does not want to, you know, go into that field and it's not for everyone. Let's be honest. Do you think that entrepreneurship is for everyone? Cause I don't, I don't think it's for everyone. Right? So you see what she's, she's trying to do here, right? Okay. Let's look at some of the text here. Because I, I just want to show you a couple of things. We're going to pull up this. Look, they've already changed, even in the title. This is the same event. Again, this is last year. Vice President Harris announces new efforts to expand capital access. Here we go with that word access again. And contracting opportunities for minority-owned and underserved businesses at the Freedman Bank Forum. So now a bank that was established and created for freedmen now is including all minorities and underserved businesses. These are the kind of things that we need to point out because when I look at Kamala Harris, I see a female version of Barack Obama in 2008, where a lot of people were excited, particularly a lot of black people were excited. We could have the first black president and that kind of thing. And, but to go along with that, Barack Obama did have a policy platform. She still does not on her website. And a lot of people were really energetic and enthusiastic about him in 08. He has the highest numbers from black voters in 2012. He still, he has the second highest numbers from black voters till this day. No other Democrat candidate has received the percentage of the black vote that Barack Obama got. That's just a reality. But something came after that. Because Barack Obama, you know, he was kind of, he's a little bit more charismatic than Kamala. She's not as charismatic. She really come across as fake to me. But Barack Obama let a lot of people down, not just black people, but in particular, black people were really disappointed by Barack Obama. He made all these promises, then he got into office and didn't do anything for black communities, went to Flint, Michigan, and stood in front of a room of black people and pretended to drink their dirty water. Barack Obama did that. You can't get more clownish than that. So anyone that comes after Barack Obama that is presenting themselves as black and is running for president, you have to be 10 times better than Barack Obama because Barack Obama was so good 
when he was campaigning. He fooled a lot of people. He fooled a lot of us and then did nothing. So this time around, in particular, lower income black voters are much more skeptical. So we can look at a Kamala and we can see the fakeness. We can look at her and we can see, oh, she kind of remind me of Barack Obama. You see what I'm saying? So now we have something to compare it to. At the time when Obama was running, you know, Cheryl, Shirley Chisholm, she ran, but a lot of us that were part of that Obama voting coalition weren't even alive when Shirley ran. So there was that. And she was also a black female, but we didn't have as much to compare it to. Now we have something to compare it to, and that's Barack Obama's presidency and his campaigning. So that being said, Kamala Harris has to do a lot more than just say, I was Joe Biden's vice president and uh, I could be the first female uh, Jamaican Indian woman of president and I'm not Donald Trump. Because the reality is a lot of the black boule, yeah, they're supporting Kamala Harris. And also a lot of white women support Kamala Harris. I just had this conversation recently. If you talk to, particularly, especially here in the Boston area, it, you know, it's, it's academic. There's a lot of academics here. It's hard to meet someone. I would say in, in, especially in the Boston, Cambridge, Somerville area, it's rare that I would meet someone that doesn't have a master's degree. That's just like, that's just like kind of the norm here. So that particular bubble, and if you talk to white women in that particular bubble, they love Kamala Harris. They love her. We was just talking about this yesterday. Oh, I hope she wins. But if you go into lower income black communities, go into some of the barber shops, go into some of the, the, the other businesses, the laundry businesses, and you ask them how they feel about Kamala Harris, they don't share the same sentiment. And there's a reason for that. And then you have her doing stuff like this. Now, if we scroll down, because it's her and the treasury department, not just her, so keep that in mind. I want to scroll down to right here where it says 50 billion. We need to highlight this because this part is also very telling. The U.S. Department of Treasury estimates that these investments in community lenders will result in a 50 billion increase in lending to Latino communities and a nearly 80 billion increase in lending to black communities over the next decade. So now the Freedmen Bank, which was established for freed men, is now <laughs> helping the Latino community and black communities. You gotta be careful when they say black, black doesn't mean freedmen. Does everybody see what has happened here? So again, go back to that video where she told you, I'm not gonna sit up here and say, I'm gonna do something specifically for black people. No, that's how she said it, right? Here's that example. Again, do those other groups and communities need help? Absolutely. But the Freedmen Bank is specifically for freed men. Now you got her and you got Janet Yellen and you got the rest of the U.S. Treasury Department. Look at what they are doing. They are adding other groups to that particular cause. So this is why I push back a lot of times when people say, well, people of color, no, 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 no. Because people of color, we're not all the same. We're not all in the same spot. Let's go on. There's another part I want to highlight here. We scroll down. Look at this. It's all in writing, folks. Now, Black and Latino entrepreneurs are starting new businesses at Faster. You see this? Guys, I've showed you multiple times. Again, we are at the bottom. We are at the very bottom when you look at wealth in this country. All right? Now, this portion here, let's scroll down. There's another one I want to highlight for you as well. This part right here. 
These new capital announcements follow recent announcements across the U.S. government to support equal opportunity and equitable access to capital, investment, and quality jobs in the president's Investing in America agenda. These include, and we're going to go to this part right about here. See, it's all in the wording. Providing opportunities to easily increase lending to underserved businesses. You see what I mean? So you see how we went from freed men to underserved to Latino community to black instead of freed men? These are the kind of things we need to pay attention to. Here we are again, awarding energy innovators in underserved communities. That's, that's a lot of people. You know, so again, something that was taken away from freed men. Look at this part right here. Let me highlight this so you can see it. The Department of Energy's Inclusive Energy Innovation Prize, which supports clean energy innovation efforts in underserved communities, made 1.5 million in awards to winning teams in Alaska, Louisiana, New York, Oregon, Puerto Rico and Washington this year, Puerto Rico. Puerto Ricans are not freed men. So this is why I continue to have the gripe that I have. I am all for helping people. I'm all for helping everybody, but I have noticed a pattern that when it comes to something that is specifically delegated towards freed men, all of a sudden it's, what about all these other groups? I'm not gonna sit here and say, I'm gonna do something that's only gonna benefit black people. And that is why we won't vote for you, huh?